the golden rule. When I was in college, one of my core courses outside of my major discipline was introductory sociology. We all had, to, we all have to take courses um, that's that's outside of our major just to give us a well-rounded education when we go to college. As you know, if you are or have been in college as well, so uh, one of the common ones that people have to take, including myself, was sociology 101. I really enjoyed that class, and it was the only class uh, that I ever had in sociology. And so I am in no position to judge how good this survey course, this survey of sociology was, or how comprehensive it was. Um, but as far as I can tell, it, it was quite uh, good. Uh, I, learned a, I learned a lot in that, uh, in that class. There was one lecture in particular, though, which I remember that I strongly disagreed uh, with uh, one, one of the main points of the lecture I strongly disagreed with from that time until now. She, the professor, uh, said in the class that all religions are basically the same. Now, this is a very popular idea. I've heard it a lot uh, outside of the class before and since, but it is simply not true. And it should be obvious that this is a myth to anyone who has spent five seconds examining different religions. There are some similarities between various religions, but the important differences between one faith and the next are legion. Uh, to really hammer her point home that all religions are basically the same, uh, my illustrious professor appealed to the golden rule. She quoted various authoritative texts from a plethora of different traditions to show that all are agreed on the golden rule. And apparently the golden rule was supposed to give the true essence of all, uh, of all religion. Not sure how she came to that conclusion, that that's the essence of uh, true religion, uh, but that seemed to be what she was implying. I don't agree with that myself, but uh, that's something uh, we'll leave aside for now. But what was really surprising to me, though, was that the so-called golden rule she quoted, uh, the golden rules, plural, that she quoted were not all the same. Not the same uh, with the biblical golden rule, I mean. In the New Testament, Jesus instructs us that we are to do, uh, if we're Christians, that we are to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. That is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Jesus goes on to expand on this by saying that all men and all women are our neighbors and that we shouldn't restrict our neighborliness, our kindness, excuse me, to our own clique. It is not the Jew or the Christian or our own family member that we are to love on, uh, but we are to love on everyone, all people, all human beings. Why, even Republicans and sinners are good at loving other people within their own group. True, uh, Jesus said, uh, true Christian love, uh, Jesus uh, said by way of contrast, uh, should be universal. So, if we are following Jesus, we are to love all people. And that is the golden rule according to Christianity or the Bible. Well, the universal applicability of the golden rule is exactly what was missing from these other traditions formulations of the golden rule, which my professor quoted. Do good to the brothers, or don't harm our fellow adherents of religion X. Uh, not do unto all. Uh, so the one thing that was supposed to epitomize this great unity of pluralistic relativism, even that was different when going from the Christian view uh, to some of the other views, some of the non-Christian religions. Even what is in common between the various sects uh, then appears to be different, and that is certainly absurd. Loving one's friends is trivial. Loving one's enemies is what sets Christianity, I mean true Christianity, uh, where we're following the Bible. Uh, that's what sets Christianity apart. Uh, uh, our love for our enemies is what sets us apart uh, from all other religions. Shalom. Or, or at least.
least uh, a portion of the religions that was being quoted there uh, by uh, my professor. Shalom.